Blog Talk Radio. Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is B2 Sports Talk Radio. I'm your host, Lee, a.k.a. the Who's Guru. As always, I got my partner in crime, B2K, you know it all. So, you'll we'll be playing big reminisce over here today, because a lot of you can reminisce for the squad they were going in supporting that training, so... I know there's going to be some reminiscence going on today. Hey, what's going on, Jay? I'm good, brother. You? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, man. You know, the NBA trade deadline has came and gone. There were some interesting things that took place today. Don't you agree? Yeah, there's some interesting things. A little few things. A little few things. A little few things, man. Let's take it from the top. I mean, there was a lot of little trade uh, hidden things, I think, um, to have some impact on the team, but the most, the shocking one I saw late today was the Philadelphia 76ers got rid of Evan Turner, Sim Kim, and LeBar, LeBoy Allen to Indiana, Indiana Pacers for Danny Granger. It's safe to say the Pacers are loaded now. I mean, loaded, huh? Yeah, loaded. I mean, he's not a he, Evan Turner is not a far drop off from Lance Stevens, and he can play the one, two, and the three. Good size. Wow. You know, he, he he's gonna be a great addition off that bench. To say for sure, you can play with him a little bit, and he's definitely gonna contribute more than the eight points a game Danny Granger was given when he actually could play. So I think that was a good heist that Indiana pulled off between adding him and adding um, your boy uh, who didn't play for Philly last year, Andrew Bynum. You know, those are two good extra pieces they're going to have, and hopefully they can mold them into the into the culture of the team during these last 25, 30 games and see how strong they look for the playoffs. But for the team that looks as like the odds-on favorite, they just got a little bit stronger today. Right, and Lapoy Allen's not bad either. He's done. The, um, he's played pretty good for them as well. And Spurs, he has decent size. Size never hurts. Um, there were all. There was also another trade that you know I'm gonna talk about. The Washington Wizards. They picked up Andrew. Um, I guess disgruntled Andre Miller from the Denver Nuggets. They gave up Jan Vesely. Um, that really didn't give much up for a, a crafty veteran, don't you think? Yeah, for the most part. I know uh, some people have been trying to paint Miller as being like a problem child, and I know I've never really seen him be a problem child. He just had a uh, um, a basketball difference with uh, B. Shaw. I guess B. Shaw was going and taking minutes from him, and he felt like he should have been getting more playing time. So, because, you know, he was used to getting playing time under a veteran coach as uh, George Call, so he was having a problem with the uh, the transition in uh, coaching, you know, style. So that's what caused uh, him to go ahead and get, um, you know, sat down by B-Shaw and deactivated for a little bit. But, I mean, he's been a... Uh, he's always been a um, highly productive player that's been underrated and underappreciated, but I know he could have been with the Sixers. They didn't want to pay him because they thought he was too old. Then he was with Denver, and he was uh, playing a vital role. He never wanted to take the job from Ty Lawson, so I think he has gotten somewhat of a bad rap, but I'm looking for him to go ahead and be like a um, Jerry Jack was, who uh, people like you and my man Tremaine and Jerry to be hating on. Uh, been another unappreciated player that can improve your team. I'm looking for him to still provide like a Jerry Jack type of influence for the Wizards, so that way when your boy Bill or uh, or Wall get hurt, because one of them will get hurt, more likely be Bill, that he can go ahead, he'll be in there and uh, be able to play some starting minutes, and uh, you know he won't drop off that much. And plus, uh, he'll give both of them two jokers time to rest. And if Bill gets hurt again, then a wall can also get some scoring opportunities and slide down to the two. You know what's funny? Denver, there's a really constructive roster anyway because, you know, they had four point guards um, starting the season off with Randy Foy, Andre Miller, Nate Robinson, and Ty Lawson. Anyway, so I guess one of them had to wind up going. Randy Foy looks like he's playing decently this year. It's funny, I guess he, you know, remember there was a little bait between Randy Foy and Brandon Roy. 
I guess Brandy Foy wins by default since he has the longevity of a Brandy Roy. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, but, you know, when we're talking about these trade deadlines, you know, before we get into other trades, I just got to think about how a lot of these GMs are really trying to do some CYA um, during the trade deadline. Because, like, the, the Washington Wizards got rid of Eric Maynard. They sent him to Philadelphia for a second-round pick, and I think um, – Denver also gave him a second-round pick in that trade. This, the Washington Wizards just um, signed Eric Maynard this year to a two-year deal. He didn't pan. I guess he didn't pan out. They found out early, so they're shipping him off already. But it's like, you know, when you made the trade for um, Martin Gortat, Ken, you had, Kendall Marshall was part of that trade. You could have had a, a Kendall Marshall to back a point guard for John Wall for free. But now, like now, because of your bad judgment, you're having you're giving up a second round pick just to give rid of this guy's contract. And mm-hmm. you're seeing these, you see a lot of that going on in the NBA. Like the New York Knicks would love to get rid of J.R. Smith's contract, but like you just signed the dude. You know, like I guess for the willingness, I think the willingness of these guys just to want a guy on your roster, they're willing to sign these bad contracts. And then I guess worry about the consequences later. But a lot of these things really kind of handicap some of these organizations. And you know, but luck, through the trade, it seems like the GMs are able to look like they're geniuses, even though really they're just trying to cover up their own tracks. Right. You no. Know, so I found that interesting. Um, another trade that went down was with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, they were able to get Marcus Thornton in exchange for Jason Terry and Reggie Evans. I guess we could say this is the end of the role for Jason Terry. Yeah. And um, Marcus, how do you – well, let me get your analysis of this particular trade. You know, do you think anybody was a winner or a loser? Um, and how do you think – you know, Brooklyn with the most to lose, I guess, because they're the ones vying for a playoff position. What have you think about the break? I, I'm going to put it like this. Thornton's a scorer. Um, they've been having issues with your boy, Darren Williams, staying healthy. So that's kind of stretched their guard rotation. So, um, and I know, um, you know, what's that? Livingston been getting a lot of, a lot of you know, mad run. Um, they got, I think it's Anderson or whoever. Like, I'm kind of lost on some of the other guards. But I will say this. Thornton is definitely a, a scorer. He can go ahead and get hot. I think he'll play a good role for them being a, a spot player and a, and a player off the bench. I don't see him really start any time during the season. Um, the only thing, so just looking at the players that were there, I would say that, you know, Thornton is an upgrade over Jason Terry because he's pretty much done. And I'm thinking that the, the Evans situation, that's going to help the Kings in the short term because since they traded off Thompson, uh, that's going to add them, a, you know, a competitor and also a ferocious, a ferocious rebounder. So, you know, mm-hmm. That, that, I just don't know, really know how that's going to work with, you know, DeMarcus Cousins, but they're definitely going to be getting some boys between the two of them when they're both on the, uh, on the court together. So, uh, for the most part, I'm going to say that Brooklyn, you know, went ahead and got the better of that trade because of the ability that, that Thornton has to score the ball. But the more important thing is with them taking on Thornton's contract, they put them over $200 million in there. In their dog on um, in their team salary, which based on how that team is not performing is ridiculous. But you know, Povarov's got the loot. He he's he's a billionaire for a reason. So you know, I guess it don't matter. But did you 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 said Jason Thompson got moved or he didn't get traded today? Did he? Yeah, he uh, they got rid of uh, Jason Thompson. I forgot where he went, but he went somewhere. Oh wow, that, uh, you know, that's picking the crates a little bit. I didn't hear anything about Jason Thompson being dealt. Yeah, um, yeah, Thompson's done because that that that's why I was like it was an interesting thing because you know they they did that and I think uh, Sacramento they they I don't know they, they like I said they're a new man so I can't really speak too much on what they're doing but they got rid of um, Thornton because of the contract and then with uh, they got the guy um, the Mason dude who was with the Spurs for a minute he was with the Heat. They got him, and I guess they must have paid him off, and uh, they waived him already. So they're they're already working on their um, salary cap and things of that nature. So now uh, another trade in the West was Steve Blake going to the Golden State Warriors. Um, 
in exchange for Ken Bazemore and Marshawn Brooks going to the Los Angeles Lakers. That's a good pickup for the Golden State Warriors. I think it's honestly it's an even trade because uh, the Lakers was loaded at guard and they're not going anywhere anyway. So Bazemore and Marshawn Brooks, they're uh, going to be free agents or expiring contracts, so you can get that off the books. I think Blake may have like a year, another year left on his contract, but. Blake may be the purest point guard that the Golden State Warriors have now. So there's going to be opportunities for Steph Curry to play off the ball and um, distribute for a guy like Curry and Iguodala and um, Michael Thompson. Um, I, yeah, Michael Thompson. Is it Michael Thompson? No, Clay Thomas, excuse me. Um, yeah, Clay Thomas. That, Clay Thomas, that is so. And he's a solid defender. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. So it's going to be a good, steady hand. You know, he's still a capable to run an offense, so they will be able to still run a fast break. And, you know, so you won't have to worry about somebody like Iguodala trying to run the point and um, bring up the ball and things of that nature. And hopefully, maybe he can even get some assists and get Iguodala some easy buckets. And then there's opportunity for Steph, to, you know, not to take so much pressure full court and, you know, make, get his Ray Allen on. Expect, you know, this late part of the season where he can just kind of move around and get open, just Blake can find up an open shot. So it's going to be interesting to see if Blake's going to start, if um, Mark Jackson's going to shuffle the lineup, or if he's just going to bring Blake off the bench to give a different look. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's going to be interesting. Well, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely going to be an interesting thing there. But, I mean, they making all these moves and anything, but quiet as kept. They should just kept Jared Jack. I mean, the, the, he was a perfect fit for the team, and they didn't want to pay him. But he was a perfect fit for the team, and now they, ever since he's been gone, we try to replace him. And like I said, you know, I, I think you know Steve Blake is a nice little player, a nice little bit player, and things of that nature. But they should have just kept Jared Jack. I mean, they should have went and paid the money, had that three guard rotation, be able to be there just in case of Curry tissue tissue ankle break, and everything would have been fine. He was he was a he was a nice little fit for that team, but. You know, it, you know, it's over now, it's a wrap. Jerry Jack saved the day for Golden State a lot of games last year. There were games where he carried the team or came off the bench and just had one of those special games that, you know, quality bench players can do, you know, dropping like a 17 or 20 off the bench. And mm-hmm. they don't have that this year. And what's sad is that Jerry Jack is not being utilized right at all in Cleveland. So it's like, well, who is? you know, it, it's just sad because, when situations like that happen, no one wins. You know, he's he's in the squad, not getting any run, not being utilized as well, probably not having as much fun. And, and Golden State Warrior, they're suffering from his loss, you know, and they're seeing the reflection in their record in, um, as of late. But the loss yes, of the Lakers, go ahead. Yeah, yeah so Golden State, they get a lot of shine, but they're nowhere near as competitive or as good as they were last year. They're barely in the playoff hunt, and no one wants to really talk about that. Yeah, you know, yeah, they are. I think they're like in the eighth, eighth spot right now. Out west. Seven, seven so, seed. Seven seed, and you know, they're they're yeah. teams like nibbling on their heels. So you know, they can't have to. This trade needs to pan off, and then we get back to their winning ways pretty soon. Mm-hmm. On the Lakers side, you know, it's all over for these guys. But it's, I'm interested to see Ken Bazemore get some run with the Lakers. Um, He's, he's been on the Golden State for a while. You know, he's never been able to crack the rotation. But from what I've seen from him, he's a pretty – he's got a nice shot, aggressive to score. You know, I've seen him do that in some league. You know, that's not the same as, of course, the NBA season. But in mm-hmm. Mike Dan's system, I'd love to see what the, what this guy can do. I think he has an opportunity to grab some attention from people. You know, I know he's tired of riding the bench, so this may be a good opportunity for him. And then Marshawn Brooks, I mean, he's a good – player, but there must be somebody's game teams don't like because it seems like he's always on the move. You know, yeah, he, but I, with, I know what you were saying earlier. You were talking about the Lakers. Um, yeah. The Lakers need to get all the guards that they can get because that's been like the weakest point of their team. Um, if it wasn't for the, all the guards getting hurt, um, the young man they got now, uh, the North Carolina product, Kenneth Marshall, who when he came out, everybody was jocking him because he had a nice little run in the uh, NCAA tournament, but then they found out it was true that he's just a point guard, but he can't score a lick. But Dan Tony system is saving his whole career right now. But they they need to get as many guards they can get because with Kobe being out, when Blake was out, Nash is is always out, 
And uh, with Marshall, they only really oh. had one healthy guard. So that really does right. help them out, even though they did lose Blake. And, you know, we can, they ain't going to need to talk about the Lakers anymore anyway. You know, they're just waiting for the draft. I don't, I, they might even have a draft pick, which would be sad if they don't, because they could really use some fresh young talent. Uh, mm. There was another trade. The Cleveland Cavaliers um, picked up Spencer Hawks from Philly. I don't even know who's on Philly's roster right now. That's going to be interesting to look at it. Um, they got rid of Spencer Hawks. He went to Cleveland in exchange for Earl Clark, Henry Sims, and two second-round picks. Um, Philly's got a lot of second round. I think they might have like nine second round picks coming up into the draft, which is crazy. What are you going to do with those many picks? I guess they're just having a yeah. fire sale. They must really want Jabari Parker or something. They're getting rid of Spencer Hawes. I don't mm-hmm. know how that helps Cleveland, really. I mean, just another big man I think is going to be underutilized and not utilized properly. I mean, who are you going to bench for Spencer Hawks? Are you going to put uh, Vergeau on the bench, Tristan Thompson? Um, well, here's the thing. They, um, Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland got him because of what they said. They're looking at the fact that um, a lot of their bigs really have not performed. So they're looking at the fact of Hawks being like a, a, a European style, um, you know, a European style or what is called center, and him being, being like a Euro term as a stretch five. And then they'll be able to open up lanes for waiters and um, Kyrie Irving to get to a hole and, and for kickouts because they don't look at him as the person going to clog the lane. So they would, that's the production they would get. Uh, so aside from Sasha Bob, a.k.a. Barajal, and um, they got the young guy, um, the rookie they got this year. He had a good little game. The other day was 16 points. But they're looking at Spencer Hall as being able to open the floor up. Yeah. But but the only thing is Mike Brown's system is predicated on defense. Spencer Hawes is not a defender. So him well, being on the court. I mean, yeah, you, you, you say that, but, I mean, really they've not been playing defense this whole year, so that doesn't really matter. Well, it seems like, you know, like I think they have a six-game winning streak right now. So Yeah, yeah, ain't got nothing to do with the defense. Okay, I'm going to give them a closer look. Uh, it's interesting, though, because, you know, they took Earl. Earl Clark had a very decent year with the Lakers last year. He signed with those guys and did absolutely nothing. Um, I don't even know why he's on Philly. That's a waste of time. I would like to see Earl Clark go to a decent team, um, even somebody like the Knicks, just because he has the ability to stretch the floor. And, you know, he shoots, he shoots well, at the previous consistency last year. Well, you were talking about the Sixers. Let's look at the squad. They got, in, they got a, uh, what's that, MC Dub. You figure Earl Clark will be starting. That's two. Um, let's see. Danny Granger? Yeah, yeah, why not? Until he gets hurt, yeah. Throw so Granger out there. Um, and then, um, and I would think that, uh, you know, some other players who, I don't really watch the Sixers that much, but who are the other players that have been getting to run? Probably the other backup point guard, uh, Wooten or Wooten, he probably be starting now. And uh, they're probably, oh, the the guy who I always say is a uh, he he's a uh, he he's he's not real. Uh, what's his name? The boy uh, that is young. People where everybody loves and he's just like a um, he's just a misfit Don't player. Don't talk bad about my like, boy. I like that man. Yeah, I know a lot of people like that. And the thing is, the people that you don't understand is with me being in the area, that is young is fine as long as you don't have to depend upon him. When you put him in a situation where you expect him to do things, that's when he sells out. So, I mean, he, he's not kind of... Now? Uh, see, that's the thing. I, I haven't been looking at who else played because I know I want to say that the backup was uh, LaVoy Allen. You said he got traded too, right? Yeah, he got traded too. Yeah, so, I mean, hey, they, they might just go with a dog on a quick, fast lineup, dude. They might mess around and throw, uh, throw that in at the five. It's like, like hey, just go ahead and just ball out. That's listen, man. That I got to I've got to watch Philly over the next few days because that that roster has to be in that uh, mess. And then, you know, if they're tanking, they're going full throttle. I'll give them credit. You know what? Well, uh, even looking at the score they've been losing by, they've been lost by two forty point games, twenty and thirty. I mean, it seems like they don't know how to lose uh, a game under twenty points. Okay. 
Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah, let's move on for them. We know they're going to be a lottery pound. Uh, they're going to have fun draft night because they got a lot of picks. Mm-hmm. Milwaukee and Charlotte made a a weird trade. Um, with the the Ramon Sessions got sent to the Bucks, which has got to be purgatory for um, Gary Neal and Luke Rittenauer. Is Ramon Sessions worth Gary Neal and Luke Rittenauer? Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the way I look at, at that move, Charlotte was looking to go ahead and, uh, I guess, upgrade the backcourt and get more scoring for the backcourt because they got what? They got Neil and Ritten now, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, so I guess they want to go ahead and, you know, give Kimba a, a breather and, uh, and you know, work on their backcourt, so. Man, Gary Neal, man, um, I I know that I, I, was, I, I thought it was real suspect when he left San Antonio to go to the Bucks. I'm like, dude, yeah, you might get your money, but little old organizations are not built to stay. And I had a feeling that wasn't going to last, and it did. But he, to me, Gary Neal's a good player. He definitely can shoot the rock. He's um, a good second simple guy, a uh, second unit guy. I think Charlotte got over in that trade. Luke Good right now is very serviceable. Gary Neal can be a spark plug off the bench. And, you know, that's extra scoring they need. You know, Charlotte's right in the mix in the East for the playoffs. I think that could be the extra yeah. push and a few more wins to get them in, man. Well, yeah, that's because your boy, is, uh, your boy is, is playing like he did back in the day, Al Jefferson. He, he's been putting in work. Yeah, I told you. You was laughing at me, man, earlier when I said that was a good pick, and I said he, he should have got some strong consideration for the All Star team. Al's been right, balling. Man, man. You're taking too far now. Hey, I, I said, hey, would you would you say if he if he replaced Noah that like that was some type of snub? Oh no, nah, listen, I already told you. Uh, Noah shouldn't have been on the squad. And then, of course, when I say that, this fool had like what thirteen, seventeen dimes. I don't yeah. know if you, you peeped that or not. You say that again? I say I don't know if you peeped that or not, but when I mentioned trying to say that, then he's he's been having like three or four games where he's been having double digit assists. Oh no, right? Yeah, he had a triple double. Um, I think last week. So yeah, something's working right over there in Chicago, and you know what? They haven't really lost a step since they got rid of Dang. So that's wow, well, yeah, but the thing. The thing that hurts him the most is losing the guard, losing Nate Robinson and Bellinelli. Um, I want to say if they had those two, if the Bulls would have kept them just for insurance because D. Rose was coming back and easing back into things instead of just putting the full weight back on them, they'd probably be a top four or five seed in the damn East. And let's talk about another trade real quick. You had Austin Day, which I didn't even know dude was still in the league, but I guess he was hibernating on Toronto's roster. Yeah. Uh, he got traded to the Spurs for uh, De Cologne. Uh, De, I guess his next name De Cologne. And that kid, that guy's actually a pretty good player from what I've seen from Elite. Everybody looks good on the Spurs, though. But pretty I'm, much. I'm one, gee, you know, I know my, my name's a hoops guru, but I'm lost to this to agree. What is the San Antonio Spurs moment with Austin Day? Hey, man, listen. You'll find out because you know as many players as they play and then how they want to rest other players. Day is going to get time, and we'll just see what Pablo had up his sleeve. I mean, Day has some height. He has some length, and he can shoot from the outside. But I haven't seen that guy in, like, two years. You know, I know he got drafted by Detroit, and he never nothing ever panned out to any fruition. I haven't even seen him. It's, I just want to see how he's see even put on weight since, you know, the last two years I saw him on the Detroit roster. But... You know, mm-hmm. Pop pitching him like that. That's a brilliant organization. They made this move. He's going to be able to fit into that organization somehow. Um, so it's going to be interesting, very interesting to see um, him on that squad if it winds up being a steal. That thing right there right now you could pretty much call a wash. But right. um, we pretty much covered all the major trades. So with the last few minutes here, let's talk about the game tonight, the big, the, you know, there's two games on. The one you probably have no interest in, Duke, North Carolina, but I'm definitely check that out a little bit. Um, yeah, you're right, no interest at all. 
Duke Syracuse Saturday would have been a very big game if Syracuse didn't lose to Boston College um, last night. That would have it's been a big game. game. Yeah, it's still a big game. You want to see if they, maybe that's even a reason why Syracuse lost because they were focused on go seeing if they could win their first game as an ACC uh, team going down to Cameron. Um, so it's definitely going to be a raucous environment. So I'm gonna definitely check that out Saturday. But um, tonight we have Durant Lebron James Part Two. Um, how you see this game going tonight? Hmm. I think uh, Miami remembers what uh, Slim Reaper and them did to him in Miami, and I'm looking for them to go ahead and, uh, you know, anybody calling him that freaking silly and damn name he gave himself. (laughs) But uh, let's say, but I'm going to think that he's going to, I'm going to call him Slim Reaper now more so just because of the fact that he didn't like it so much, he decided to give himself an addictive servant name and think that it's cool. So he, he, I'm going to call him that more now because it's like he want to go with that silly name. But I'm going to go ahead and, and take Miami in this one uh, for them to go ahead and uh, show some pride and want to, you know, do what he does and put the bronze coming up the 42-point game. So we'll see the two plus players in the league go, go at each other. But I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick Miami with, with uh, Russell Westbrook coming back. He he might be a little skittish and things of that nature and uh, probably be a close game. It's definitely going to be a tight, a close game, and don't for a minute think LeBron's not going to bring his game tonight. You know, all this talk he's hearing about Durant being the MVP, it sparked some fire under that man. You can see it in his recent play. You can even see the way he was playing in the All-Star game. Um, from the tip-off, he was balling. Like, I think he wanted the MVP, or at least to win the game. So it's going to be interesting. I, I see I see LeBron putting up some buckets tonight, but Kevin Durant as well. He's shown a lot of aggression lately, and I like it. Only yeah, thing is, he I still think, gonna, is he still going to have that, though, with, with Westbrook being back? Is he going to go back to fallback mode? Well, I think he is, for the, well, at least for tonight, because hopefully Scott Brooks brings his guy off the bench, wanting to not Ooh. disturb the starting unit. What's the rest of well, you know, really, you know, doggone well, the Westbrook is starting. Are you starting him tonight? Huh? I, I wouldn't start him tonight. I, I wouldn't start anybody. Listen, you wouldn't start nobody. That's the reason why you wouldn't have no job. That joke is starting. You tripping right now. He coming off the bench, man. But us oh, at God. home, him, but think about it. I'll be, I know where I'll be coming texting. off the bench. Where it'll fly, I'll be taking seven minutes in the first quarter and get the crowd hyped and pump them up another level. Meanwhile, not disturbing the continuity you built with the starting unit you already have. That's what I'm anticipating to ha- happen. More than likely, I'll be wrong, but that's what I'm I'm thinking they should do. Um, but Miami definitely wants to go in here and make. They know how they embarrassed themselves last time, and. LeBron James definitely would like to shut Durant down or outshine him on his home floor so that tomorrow everybody be talking about how LeBron James is taking over the MVP race. So I think this is going to be probably one of the best games we've seen this year. It's definitely going to be competitive in Oklahoma City. So it should be very entertaining. But uh, – Outside of, as a matter of fact, and there's a good game after that. I believe I think Golden State and Houston play it, uh, the second game, so that'll be pretty interesting. I wonder if Steve Blake will actually be able to be in the uh, lineup tonight. I, and you know what? On the next show, we're about to talk about some more trades because I heard Antoine Jameson was traded, but I don't even know where he was traded to. So all I got to do is ask, brother. Antoine Jameson huh? is uh, is with the Hawks. <laughs> he's on his free falling squad down here. Like, how's he gonna help? <laughs> but you know, hey, that's hey. what it is. He still gets paid, so I'm so sorry for him. He can retire here. Exactly. Yeah, man. But yeah, we covered all our bases, Ed. Man, I think this is a good time to exit stage left, man. All right, boy. All right. Anything you gotta add? Nah, man. We we're gonna leave for next time. All right, cool. We everybody, thanks for uh, listening to BC Sports Talk Radio. We'll see you in the next episode. We'll talk about the, the results of this game and what's to come. Take care. Peace.